Welcome to Modern C++ for the Windows Runtime. My name is Kenny Kerr, and in this demo I'm quickly going to show you how to create a Windows Runtime component, a reusable component, or DLL, implemented entirely with Modern C++, that can then be used from any Windows Runtime language projection, such as C Sharp. Here you can see I've got a copy of the Modern Executable in my Projects folder. If I simply run it, you can see the list of commands, as well as a selection of options. The first thing you need to do is build the modern C++ language projection. That's what the library command does for you. The language projection takes the form of a standard C++ library, a header-only library. Now there are a number of options you can specify here as well. You might want to create the library in a specific folder, or perhaps limit what namespaces from the Windows SDK are included. You can also specify a certain SDK folder to target a specific version of the Windows SDK. Otherwise, Modern will pick suitable defaults. So I'll just hit Enter. Now you can see the heart of Modern in action. It's reading the Windows Platform SDK, projecting it into Modern C++, and then writing out the resulting library. With that done, I should find the Modern C++ library in the Projects folder. There you can see that it created a Modern folder containing the bulk of the library, as well as a modern header that can easily be included into any standard C++ project. I can now use this Windows Runtime language projection to build Windows apps as well as Windows Runtime components. Right, let's create our first component. Modern kicks things off by creating a Visual C++ project. There you can see the essentials of any WinRT component written entirely in native code. No component extensions, no managed code, just standard C++. Let's open her up and see what's going on. So there's Visual Studio with our new WinRT component. I'll hit Control shift b so long, so that it can get along with compiling the pre-compiled header, while we have a look around. First, there's the module definition file, listing the DLL's exports. Those functions are implemented for you inside the component's module source file. This is all scaffolding that any WinRT component requires, but you don't need to think about this since the modern compiler will keep it up to date on your behalf. The precompiled header. And this includes the modern library, the header-only modern C++ language projection for the Windows runtime. OK, let's create our first runtime class. We'll create a super simple class and make sure all of this works by calling it from a C-sharp app. You need to use IDL to define your component's ABI. IDL might seem a bit grungy, but it's the only language-independent way to describe WinRT components. So it nicely separates the ABI from the implementation and ensures that the component will be easily consumed from any WinRT language projection. How about a cat class? That's the for declaration, and then the runtime class itself. It needs a version. And I'll make it default activatable. That means that the resulting class will have a default constructor. Next, it needs a default interface. And I'll go ahead and define that as well. This also needs a version. And a GUID. And I'll give it a single method for now. Excellent. Now if I try to compile, Middle takes a stab at the IDL, and if it doesn't find any problems, Modern goes ahead and updates all of the necessary scaffolding. It also created a new source file for the cat class, so I'll go and add that to my project. And now if I try to compile again, all is well. Great. Now let's take a look at what Modern has created for us. Before looking at the cat class itself, let me just point out some of the scaffolding that Modern takes care of for you. Over in the Components module source file, this DLL get activation factory function has been updated to serve activation requests for the new cat runtime class. 
Again, you don't need to think about any of this, but it's good to know that someone is, and as you can see, it's all just standard C++. Need a custom allocator? No problem. Just overload the make function template. You're in control here. Now let's take a look at the cat class itself. Looking at the cat source file, I can see that there's already a default constructor and a meow method, and notice that it doesn't return an H result. Now if I open up the header file, we can see the cat class as well as the cat factory class. The factory is what actually creates the cat during the activation process, and it's here where you can easily override that process in any number of ways. The cat factory is also responsible for any static members. Some language projections will try to hide the fact that there is a factory object, but this is no more complicated and provides far more clarity and power for the C++ developer. Anyway, all of the plumbing is provided for you via these class templates, cat ABI and cat factory ABI. But before we get too far, let's confirm that we can actually activate and call this component from C sharp. That's a good litmus test of whether this modern C++ language projection, which again is just standard C++, actually works as advertised. Just to make it a little bit more interesting, let's change the meow method to return a string. And I'll update the definition accordingly. And then I'll update the IDL to match. Great. Now if I build a project, this modern C++ project is compiled, producing the native code for the component, as well as the WinMD file for c -sharp projects to consume. Let's now create a new c -sharp store app. And I'll just pick a blank app. The project template produces a lot of code for a blank app, but we can just ignore all of that. I'll pick the x86 build configuration and then add a reference to my new component. There's the WinMD file. Great. Now let's create a cat object. Here's our namespace. And it doesn't really matter where, but let's just new one up here in the app constructor. There it is. And let's call its method and see what it returns. And let's see what happens. I create the cat, so far so good, and then call this method. And oh, look at that. The method returns the string from the standard C++ implementation. There it is, nice and simple. And it's all completely native, completely standard C++. How about a more interesting example? Now cats are really boring, let's consider a more interesting creature, the chicken, and specifically, let's add a hen class. I'll declare a new runtime class, and define it below. A version, and I'll make it activatable. A default interface, and I'll quickly define it here. its version, and a good, and then a cluck method. Great, so that's a basic runtime class. But let's spice this up a little, let's add an event. And I'll use a generic event handler that accepts a string as its event argument. And of course, it returns the event registration token, so that the caller can unregister the event if needed. So that's interesting, but let me highlight some of the capabilities of the activation factory as well. Let's add our own unique hen constructor. For that, I'll need the hen factory to implement a custom activation interface.
It doesn't matter what it's called, but I'll call it single method create hen. So if all goes well, the hen class will have another constructor that accepts a single integer. Let me quickly version this interface and assign it to GUID. And then I need to associate it with the hen runtime class. So this hen class continues to be default activatable. It will have a default constructor and now it sports any additional constructors as defined by the iHen factory interface. Finally, let's add a static property to the hen class just for fun. For that, I'll need another interface. A version and a grid. And oh, I don't know, let's return the number of hens in the yard. And finally, I need to associate the static interface with the hen runtime class. Excellent. So that was a bit of work, but we've managed to describe a very interesting runtime class in a language independent manner that can now be projected very easily into both C Sharp and modern C++. And I'll just add the newly created hen source file to the project. And there you can begin to see all of the stubs that the modern compiler has produced for us. You can see the default constructor as well as the custom constructor taking an integer. There's the cluck method, the clucking event, and finally the hen count method. Notice also that the hen count method is on the hen factory. That's the hen count static property. Let's flip over to the header to see this all at a glance. While the hen factory looks like it's only taking care of the hen count static property, in fact it is also responsible for forwarding the requests to both hen constructors, but the underlying scaffolding in the hen factory ABI class template takes care of that for us. We can of course override any of those, but this will do for now. Now let's quickly confirm that this still works from C sharp before we add a more interesting implementation. Over in our C-Sharp project, I'll get rid of this cat and instead create a hen. Now notice immediately that the C-Sharp IntelliSense engine has picked up that there are in fact two constructors on the hen. Great, and let's call the cluck method to start. And I'll drop a breakpoint here again and give it a try. I create the hen object and then call the cluck method. And oh look at that, the debugger has detected a not implemented exception. Amazing, that's just what the cluck method over in our modern C++ component throws. Very neat. So now let's actually add a more interesting implementation. Let's implement this event and then we can raise it from the cluck method. Now you can implement this however you wish, but I'll just use a helper provided by the modern library. And I'll just copy the type of the event handler. There we go. Now back in my source file, I can wire up the event registration. First to add an event handler. And then to remove the event handler. Great. Let's now raise this event inside the cluck method. Oh, and let's just return some value from this hen count property. And let's take it for a spin. Let's first make sure that we can call that static property. Looks good. And then before calling the cluck method, I'll add an event handler. There we go. So there's the event handler with its string argument. That's a more sensible name. Now with a few breakpoints over there and inside the event handler, 
Let's see if this all works as advertised. So there's the hen count property, and sure enough, it returned 321. Then I create the hen object, add my event handler, and call the cluck method. Sure enough, the event handler has been raised, and there I can see the expected value. And that's a quick tour of just some of the capabilities of modern C++ for the Windows runtime.